morning we're going to have the Teen Challenge Ministry. Uh, some of you are very familiar with it. And you're going to be blessed. Okay, and if you're here this morning and you do not know of Jesus Christ, keep your heart open. If you're here this morning and you have an addiction in your life, keep your heart open. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. So I'm privileged to introduce Teen Challenge, led by Brother Norman. You will never guess in a million years who he's related to. Okay? He's related to Jared. Okay, now for some of you, you don't know who he is. But Jared is in charge of the church growth in the Free Methodist Church in Canada. Okay? And uh, there's a connection there. Yeah? Two different people. <laughs> <laughs> so we're glad to have Mark Brother Norman, Director of Church Growth. I mean, Church Relations. Bless you, brother. Uh, I just got to hug an angel. <clears throat> Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are you all happy? Yeah. We're in the right place, guys. We found it. Woo. Good. Well, it's an honor to be here. Well, at my age, it's an honor to be any place, but I... <laughs> Somebody asked me one day, what are you doing with the youth? How come you're working with younger people? I said, simple, because I'm too old to pastor. <laughs> so when you go up to pasture... <laughs> So it's, it's, a, it's a privilege. I, I never, ever, ever dreamed that I would, my wife and I would be doing what we're doing today. Now, usually I'm with the prettier side of Teen Challenge. Because we work with the women's center. Now, I, I live in Niagara, so I'm right between London and Aurora. And uh, it's more fun being on the Aurora side because Canada's Wonderland is about 15 minutes away from the center. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, this is my retirement job. <clears throat> and after 11 years at Huntley Street and uh, being a part of that for, for all those years, I tried the retirement thing, it lasted a whole eight months. And then my friend and former CEO of Team Challenge, George Glover, gave me a call one day and he said, I want to talk to you. And we talked two or three different times and met with his executive and then they threw me into the deep end of the pool. And so, so far my head has just been a bear of water. <laughs> and I've been with the guys for the last few days and we're together right through until next Sunday night. Pray for my survival. <clears throat> we are having a great time and God is so good to us. Aren't you glad that Jesus loves you? Amen. That he's still doing miracles in this day that we're living in. And uh, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. And uh, God has been so gracious. And as, as Pastor mentioned, my son in law is the church growth director for Free Methodist Church. My in laws were buried in the Free Methodist Church forever. Uh, then I met my wife in college and so snuck her off to fresh fish in the Maritimes. <clears throat> She discovered there was something more than what came out of a box. <laughs> and uh, so when she hit PEI, she didn't know what to expect. And uh, so that's where I was born and raised. And so I've uh, been in Ontario now for a long time, it seems. So Jared, uh, the pastor alluded to, he's married to one of my twins and to Catherine. And they now live in Saskatoon. And uh, so somewhere today, my three daughters are somewhere in a church all serving God, and uh, we just are so thankful and grateful to the Lord. What you're going to hear today, and some of you already are familiar with, with Teen Challenge, and this church has been a tremendous gift to the ministry. I'll get a little emotional here. Um, because you have supported us for a long time. Of course, your own pastor being a graduate 104 years ago from the program. <laughs> lunch and I may not make it. <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it's one of those treats to come to a place that, um, that has been loving on this ministry for, for a long time because of the generosity and care, not only of Teen Challenge from the heart of your pastor, but from you in this community. And, and we're just so very, very thankful for that. 
Anyway, enough out of me. Um, you want to get to the real stuff here. But before we have the guys come and do Reality Is, um, I want to take you just on a small little three-minute journey, a little look into the Women's Center that's been going since 2009. Let me just say this. The dynamic of the women, not, in, not as opposing the men, but when women come into the program, it's quite different. How many of you ladies know you're quite different from men? <laughs> Proud of it. <laughs> and they come with they come with a deeper root, it seems, in some ways. Because of maternal instinct, because of all the stuff that ladies are, and because of their their needs that um, sometimes men don't always understand. Let me put it that way. So they come to us very broken. Some of them leave their children behind in the care of a parent or some other guardian to come into the program because they're so broken. But when you see one of those girls like we did with Jen, left Moncton, she'd been an escort, she had two boys from two different fathers, the man she'd been living with was not her husband. But her downward spiral into the, into the darkness of, of, of the drug world uh, just about cost her her life. And somebody intervenes, told her about Jesus, told her there's a place that can help her. And a pastor got a hold of this and got a hold of her, put her on an airplane, paid for it out of his own pocket, and sent her to the, up to Aurora. My wife and I walked in one day her first weekend that she was in the place. My wife said to me after she had met her and we were leaving, she said, I don't know if that girl's going to make it or not. She just seems like she's not going to get there. Well, thank God the Lord has more power and strength than what we do and what we see at times. And Jen not only got gloriously born again, set free, filled with the Spirit, and today she's back in Moncton and graduated, and she is just thriving in the Lord. But to say this, that her mother came to Christ, her uncle had to drive the mother up to Ontario with her two boys, and if you can imagine, and there's brochures on the table out there, it shows the, the men's center, the picture of it, and also shows a picture of the women's center, and you can see one of the buildings, but I think every girl that of the 25 women that were there, I think there was 25 or 24 faces looking out over the parking lot that day as her mother and her uncle and her two little boys drove in on that property. Jen went out the door. Hadn't seen her boys now for about six or so months. That van door opened. <clears throat> and out came those boys on the tear. And she dropped her knees and they just hit her on the run. And were in her arms. And for the first time in their little lives, they were in the arms of a brand new mother. And not only through the program was she being healed, but those little guys in their school were little orangutans. But as the mother would come through to, to victory, the children were settling down. And they were in the maritime, and she was up. Don't ask me how God works. I don't know. He's too big for me. But all I know, when he gets a hold of it, he can make miracles where there's nothing but desperation and loss. And he takes the ashes of one's life, and he turns it and makes beauty out of it. Amen? Amen? That's what he does. So you'll see a little bit of the Women's Center here. And, uh, and, I, and I'm a little bit biased of the Women's Center because my father had three daughters. Three granddaughters, and the Lord just threw three grandsons in there just to shake it up. <laughs> and so it's a marvelous journey. So can we go to the DVD that plays? Teen Challenge Canada is a faith-based residential program that helps adult men and women overcome drug and alcohol addictions. Each person comes with a story. Some dull their pain with marijuana, others abuse prescription pills, alcohol, cocaine, methamphetamines, or crack. All have lost control of their lives. 
They're business owners, skilled tradesmen, computer programmers, general laborers, and hairdressers. Because of their addictions, their lives are littered with destruction, broken marriages, failed education, lost jobs, defaulted mortgages, and children taken away. To meet the growing need for addiction treatment in Canada, Teen Challenge operates six sites across the country for adults over the age of 18. Through basic biblical principles, students in our program learn that they are valued and can contribute to society. Best of all, they discover that God gives them hope, freedom, and a tomorrow. Teen Challenge founder David Wilkerson taught these same principles. He started the organization in 1958 in New York City. His pioneering work resulted in more than 1,100 centers in 92 countries. In our holistic program, men and women get healthy in body, mind, and spirit as they eat nutritious food, exercise regularly, and connect with God. With help from our staff and certified addictions counselors, students identify root issues, bullying, dysfunctional families, divorce, death of a loved one, rejection, abandonment, and abuse. These and other deep hurts drive people to drugs and alcohol for relief. Preparing to live productively, they learn to balance a checkbook, use a computer, and speak publicly. Students are guided to become better parents and spouses. Through work duty and internships, valuable job skills are gained. Those who have not completed high school are assisted to get their GED. You can help even more men and women start a new life through Teen Challenge. Take a tour at one of our six centers to find out more about our ministry. Volunteer. You can mentor a man or a woman or share a skill with our students. Celebrate with us at a student graduation ceremony. Attend a fundraiser. Choose from a golf classic, a freedom ride and silent auction, a fundraising banquet, or our annual Christmas concert. Invite the Teen Challenge Choir to perform at your church or community group. Pray. Your ongoing prayers enable our students to overcome challenges. Sponsor a student for just $40 a month. Your financial support and notes of encouragement keep our students motivated to stay in the program. Consider a one-time gift toward our operating expenses or a special project. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of those struggling with addictions. Amen. So how many of you received one of these things coming in the door? That there is a miracle opportunity. We'll talk about it later. Guys, would you come? What is reality? Reality is your birth mom abusing drugs and alcohol so much that she has a stroke and forgets that you're her son. Reality is, at the age of four, being adopted and told, here's your new family. Everything's going to be all better now. It's being so out of control that the same people who adopt you have to throw you in a boy's home because they don't know what to do with you anymore. Reality is, breaking into houses just to sleep because you're too drunk or high to care anymore. And reality is, doing almost four years in seven different jails across Ontario, because you can't stop stealing to feed your addictions. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. So you want to know reality. Reality is having your parents separate at the age of four and witnessing nothing but unstable relationships throughout your childhood. It's going to college and becoming so frustrated with yourself you blow your entire tuition on drugs just to avoid facing your sense of failure. It's showing up high out of your mind to your own grandmother's deathbed because you can't function without your pills. Reality is dropping out of college, stealing hundreds from your family, and losing a good job, all just to support your addiction. And reality is losing your ex-girlfriend to drugs, only to go back to, out two months later using the same drugs yourself. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. Reality. Reality is being so angry, violent, and addicted to drugs that your entire family tells you one by one that you're no longer welcome to be a part of their lives. Reality is missing out on the birth of your second born son 
And when you get the phone call to be told he has arrived, you are too high on MDMA to comprehend it. It is ending up in jail for physically abusing the love of your life. Reality? Reality is driving down Highway 401 so intoxicated, you lose control and roll your car just to be found unconscious in a ditch. And reality? Reality is knowing that drugs cause your little brother to go manic, but influencing him with cocaine, marijuana, and MDMA just so you can have somebody to use with. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. Although we've all had different realities, we've all been changed by the same truth. Truth is, through Christ, I'm rebuilding burnt bridges with my family I didn't think were possible to rebuild. Truth is, when I came to Teen Challenge, I gave my life to Christ, publicly confessing it, being baptized January this year. Yes. Truth is, I know I'm forgiven for my past, and I actually look forward to my future. Truth is, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. The truth is, God turned my life 180 degrees around and 360 upside down. relationships I damaged with my family and they come to visit me every month in my program. The truth is I've forgiven myself for the jobs I've ruined or the opportunities that I've lost and by the grace of God I have a job waiting for me when I return home. The truth is my dad came to visit me back in March and he was brought to tears at the change the Lord and Team Challenge I've had in my life. The truth is even though I believe the lie that, like, that wrecked everything, now that I believe the truth God is putting everything back together again. And the truth is, on February 12th, at the side of my brothers in the Teen Challenge Chapel, I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart, mind, body, and soul. The truth is, by God's grace, He is changing my heart daily, restoring the relationships between my family and I, and is delivering me from my anger issues. The truth is, the love of my life gave her life to the Lord a month after I entered Teen Challenge, and has given me another opportunity to be the father and future husband she has always desired. The truth is, the truth is, I am determined to lead my family to the cross, and I am prepared to be a godly father and future husband of Christ. The truth is, I am no longer a slave to drugs, but I am free in Christ. Yes. In truth, truth is, I love my little brother. No longer am I going to hinder his life, but I am going to lift it up. And moving forward, I will be a positive role model for him. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sins... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. John 1, 17. As the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Proverbs 8, 7. For my mouth will utter truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. That's the truth. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, I experienced Greg <clears throat> last spring in a service in Bowmanville. I didn't know he did a 360. <laughs> and I'm sitting there in this church full of people, packed to the doors. And all of a sudden, I see a guy's feet going through the air. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> That would never happen with me. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? Yeah. What God is doing is, is absolutely <coughs> astonishing. But last night is, I'm going to just tell on you a little bit. Where'd you go, Tyler? Right there. As he was talking to his fiance last night, praying with him. Knowing that God, and only God, 
to take and make miracles out of something that is so awful. And to see Jesus changing a broken, dark life and bringing light through it is nothing short of being a miracle. And uh, I'm going to ask him to come. He's going to share his story a little bit more in full. But he talked about his brother feeding uh, drugs and, and the manic situation. In the last 10 years in this country of Canada alone, just here, death by drug abuse, whether it's prescription or otherwise, death in Canada alone by drug abuse, prescription or otherwise, is up 250%. That's tragic. That's tragic. Europe, they saw a 43% spike in schizophrenia. Couldn't figure out why the medical community is having such a problem and the pressures it's putting on in, in the medical costs. And the scientists started drilling back on this thing and drilled the thing right back to marijuana use because it's been legalized there now for 20 some years. So all the things that politicians and others think, well, we're just going to do this because it's the best way to handle things. It is not the best way to handle things. Because all they're doing is opening up another door to say, it's okay, just pay the tax on your drug. Hello? Yeah. And so what we're doing, we're damning lives and destroying them. Because with some of these precious lives who get addicted to marijuana, and it is a gateway drug, and they come right back to that because marijuana is not like it was back in the 60s and 70s. There, there's one chemical in there that, if it had any value, has been long since drained out of it because of engineering of the weed so it can be more addictive and more potent in whatever it's supposed to be accomplished. <coughs> so these things are very, very serious. We cannot take anything for granted. And we have to pray against the... the, the <coughs> Ability for our kids in this country of Canada to be able to get drugs and it's astounding. This past year alone, this past year alone, 219,000 of our high school students in this province alone were offered alcohol or drugs in some manner or form. They were given that choice. Some would get very involved. It's scary. The good news is God is bigger than all that stuff. Come yeah. down. Good morning. Good morning. Just want to thank you guys for having us here. It's a privilege to come here and share our stories with you guys. All right. Well, hello. My name is Tyler. I was born September 17th, 1990, in Kingston, Ontario. I'm 24 years old. Um, at the age of three, my parents separated, which eventually led to their divorce. Growing up, I had a very chaotic and confusing childhood. I had a father I so desperately wanted to look up to, but it seemed like all he wanted to do was look down upon me. Who uh, only took joy in being an every other weekend father, and who emotionally and verbally let me down more times than I can remember, causing me to question myself, does this man really love me? Uh, fortunately, my father didn't have substance abuse issues, but he did have anger, rage, and control problems, which led me living my childhood in fear and torment, and uh, made me believe like I wasn't good enough, not only for him, but for anyone. I uh, thank God that I had a mother that tried her best to raise me in a Christian environment. She uh, loved me even through my worst years, never giving up on me, even though I did absolutely everything I could to reject her love and push her away every chance I had. Um, in my early teenage years is when things completely got out of control. I remember promising myself that I would never be like my father, but soon enough it was his uh, image I would see when I would look into the mirror. As my teenage years progressed, my anger turned into a violent temper, leaving my mother no choice but to ask me to leave her home. <laughs> I uh, spent the next several years of my life, as I would like to call it, living like a gypsy. I lived with uh, various family members in interval homes. Uh, being previously ex exposed to marijuana at a young age, and now living on my own, I quickly took advantage of the statement, I will do what I want, when I want. Um, which led me to become very selfish and with no remorse push away the people who love me 
because I questioned if I wanted the very emotion of love that was causing me so much pain throughout my childhood. At this point, I also started cutting myself. At first, it was to numb the pain and put focus on something else, but I quickly realized by doing this, I could control the situation and the people around me. It didn't take long before I was completely lost, I, uh, I, causing me to struggle with my identity. I spent a significant amount of time trying to fit in, and I learned not only how to manipulate people, but I also learned how to lie to them very well. I uh, lied so much, I began to believe the very words that were coming out of my mouth. At the age of 21, I uh, started dating the love of my life, and five months later learned that we would be having our baby boy. Unfortunately, this news was not enough to make me veer away from the very drug that was beginning to destroy my life. Instead, I spent, instead, I spent a significant amount of time uh, trying to figure out how and where I would smoke, and making it very evident to Kelly that not even the birth of our baby boy, baby boy will make me quit. Uh, three months after my son Tatum was born, I made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I uh, physically abused my girlfriend, and uh, I was charged for domestic assault, for which I ended up serving a 90-day weekend sentence in jail. I uh, remember coming home after the first weekend just to realize my life had come crumbling down in front of me. My uh, girlfriend and son had packed up and moved out. At this point in my life, I uh, figured change was necessary. I uh, started uh, attending church, counseling sessions, even started, uh, even started getting regular drug testing just to prove I was clean. But I was uh, doing all these things to try and win my family back, and not because I was actually ready to change. Soon enough, I had manipulated everyone into believing I was different again. I had another opportunity to be the father I never had. I got a well-paying job in the laborers' union. I uh, was blessed to find out that we would be having our second son, and uh, we bought a new vehicle for our family. I couldn't ask for a better life at this point. Again, falling short of the responsibilities in my life, I started using again, but uh, marijuana wasn't enough anymore. I, uh, started using cocaine and MDMA to numb the emotions that I had followed up for so long. This is uh, when things really fell apart. One night after I was partying, I was driving down the 401 severely intoxicated. I uh, fell asleep at the wheel and I was found unconscious with my car upside down in a ditch. By God's grace and plan he has for my life, I owe it to him that I am still alive today. Um, as my hidden secrets became a reality, my girlfriend and my family finally had enough. It was the final straw. I uh, jumped from home to home, even living on the streets. I began to use cocaine and MDMA regularly, and by the time my uh, second born son, Rowan, was born, it was evident that things had spiraled out of control, which caused me to end up missing out on his birth because I was just too worried about using drugs and allowing anger to be a part of my life. Um, living in a bottomless pit of despair and being sick and tired of letting everyone down around me, I finally decided I wanted to change. I heard about Teen Challenge from my Uncle Eric, a former graduate of the program. And let me tell you, God has done wonders in this man's life. He has showed me that through him there is hope for restoration and a lost and broken man's soul. I also had a very concerned and praying mother who constantly asked me if I was ready to get help on multiple occasions. Um, let me tell you, the prayer, the power of prayer through a mother is a wonderful thing. So if there's any mothers out here that are praying for a lost, broken individual in your family, continue praying because your prayers will be answered. Um, leading up to May 13, 2014, when I entered the program, I. Uh, I had many fears. I turned around two times on the way to Teen Challenge purposely, but thank God for a stubborn, loving mother that did absolutely everything she could do and say to get her son to Teen Challenge. Um, by coming to Teen Challenge, God has begun to do marvelous things in my life. He has taken away that fear that I had when I entered the program and has shown me that all things will work together for our good, for those who love and trust Him. And I am proud to say today that I love and trust our Lord and Savior.
God is restoring the relationship between my mother and I, and, I'm a hundred, and I can 100% say with confidence that not only do I love my mother, but now I respect her. And I thank God every day that she is my mother and always will be my mom. He has also given me the grace to meet my second-born son upon entering the program and has given me another opportunity to be a father, not only a father, but a godly father to my two children. <laughs> God has shown me that I no longer need to lie, and I can be proud of the man I am and be confident with my speech. Proverbs 10.19 says, Truthful lips will endure forever, but a lying tongue only lasts a moment. I am preparing to live forever. Kelly has forgiven me for my past, and she's given me another opportunity to be a part of her life. This is not something I will ever take for granted again. God has shown me and spoken to me through scripture that you are to honor and respect your wife. You are to lay your, you are to lay down your life for her and make her feel protected and secure. God has shown me not only is she a gift of his creation, but she is a child of God. Though we are not married yet, she is the love of my life, and in due time, in God's will, she will be the woman I want to marry and spend the rest of my life with. Last but not least, God has really begun to open my eyes and has shown me that I no longer need to live in self-hatred or unforgiveness. My past is my past, and I have been given the chance by His mercy and grace to shape my future. Along with that, I am beginning to accept that I no longer need control over my life, nor do I want it. I'm giving God the full control. This is the beginning of my future, and God still has a long way to go with me, but this is the start of me stomping on the devil and allowing our Lord and Savior to work through me. On uh, August 6, 2014, I rededicated my life to the Lord, and I still struggle with daily situations, but now I am proud to say I'm a child of God, and He is on my side to help me overcome every battle. My goals for when I finish Teen Challenge are to uh, finish my apprenticeship in the Labor's Union, but uh, most of all, recently I've come to realize that I'm just going to allow God to lead me wherever He wants to go. And um, Last but not least, I uh, would like to serve Kelly, Tatum, and Rowan, along with the rest of my family, to the fullest, and be a servant of the one true King, Almighty God. There's a scripture I would like to leave you with, and it's Philippians 3, verse 13. I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Thank you. church. Are you okay to hear another testimony? Thank you. That makes me feel better about what's going to happen next. <laughs> Hi, my name is Billy. I am, uh, I am a graduate of, of this year, of May this year, May uh, 2014. I am currently halfway through month six of uh, a 12-month internship at Teen Challenge. It is, it, is, it is my great honor and privilege to, to be able to share with you guys today, to, 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 uh, to be with Norm and the guys on this, uh, on this Ottawa tour. God is moving. He's so good. He's moving. We're seeing miracles. We're seeing people's lives being impacted. And we're just ordinary guys. And he's, and he's just using our testimonies to be able to, uh, to tell people how awesome God really is. I was uh, born and raised in Toronto. Um, I now call Richmond Hill, Ontario my home for the greater part of my adult life. I was a liar, I was a thief, I was an alcoholic, I was a pothead. I came back to Teen Challenge on, uh, on May 14th of last year. My parents are Macedonian-speaking people from Northern Greece. They immigrated to Canada in 1958. I am their only child. I was baptized. I was raised in the Greek Orthodox Church. My mom and dad taught me the difference between right and wrong. My mom grew up as a 13-year-old in World War II Greece. She had seen horror and devastation and poverty. And my mom was determined to provide our family with the best life 
that this country can offer. Macedonian parents do not put their kids into daycare, at least not then. And the family business was a tavern, it was a banquet hall, it was a go-go bar. It ran almost 24-7. I lived in the bar. I worked my first part-time job when I was 15 years old. I got drunk for the first time at the company Christmas party. Years later in high school, a girl broke my heart, which isn't that unusual, it happens all the time. <laughs> But something snapped. My uh, drinking was no longer a good time. It, it quickly, very quickly became out of control. Things got so bad that at the age of 17, I ended up in the psychiatric ward of Scarborough General Hospital for over a month with another three as an outpatient. Drinking became a regular part of my life for the next 25 years. For decades, I did nothing but bounce. I have bounced from job to job and from relationship to relationship. I haven't done any time, but I've been arrested repeatedly. I was a regular guest of York Region Police drunk tanks. I attempted suicide once, and I have had repeated overnight stays in the psych ward because of the potential for another attempt. I have tried and I have failed university six times. I am trained in nothing, so my jobs were all dead-end and soul-crushing. I worked, but I still visited food banks and community dinners. My money went to cases of beer and baggies of weed. I walked around plazas and malls picking up used cigarette butts because I couldn't afford a pack of smokes. I would go to my parents with a new plan to fix my life. Thousands of dollars have been invested in the Get Billy Fixed program. To little avail until I met a living God. I would go to my mom and dad and I would say, this thing's going to fix me. This school, this girl, this car, this opportunity. Da -da -da, ba -ba -ba. And because my parents were so desperate to see something good happen in my life, they would pull out the checkbook. One of those Get Fixed programs was a Teen Challenge program 14 years ago. <coughs> Religious people seem to have it together. <laughs> I am a proud and arrogant man who refused to trust in God. It troubled me to think that God may not be on board with my selfish agenda. God wanted my heart. There's a, there's a praise and worship song we love at the farm where it says, you won't relent until you have it all. He won't relent until he has it all. I just wanted to negotiate a deal where I could be a good guy, but not miss out on the latest trends. Apparently, God will not be negotiated with. And this terrified me, so I ran. My parents finished their working years running a small no liquor license fish and chip shop. My aunt Anna and my uncle Louie are believers. They led my family to a relationship with Jesus Christ. At one point I did say the sinner's prayer. I attended church off and on. But I never surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. My relationship with him was always under my own terms and my own conditions. I ran my own show. I have tried everything in this past quarter century to scrape some kind of purpose and meaning from this life, outside of God's love. During my program, there's, a, there, there's academics at the program, there's an education program in place. I completed a book assignment called Who Do You Think You Are by Mark Driscoll. Mark writes, people go from one addiction and compulsion to another, one religious commitment to another and one relationship to another continually seeking the answer to the question, who am I? Meanwhile, they never find the only true answer to their identity crisis, Jesus Christ. I have church hopped. I have explored every ism you can think of. I have looked for purpose and meaning in love relationships. I have tried to fix myself again and again, and the results have been dismal. 
In the middle of a graveyard shift at work, I told the supervisor, okay, I'm gonna go home. I walked home alone. It was the middle of the night. I was working night crew in a heat treatment, um, uh, auto parts uh, heat treatment plant. I stopped walking. Three o'clock in the morning, there's no bus anyways in Newmarket. I just stood there. The spirit of the living God arrested me on Prospect Street in, no in Newmarket in the dead of night. I stopped walking. I couldn't take another step. And for the first time in my life, I didn't want to get sober. I didn't want to get fixed. I didn't want an opportunity to pull my socks up. I just wanted Jesus. I just needed Jesus. It was the only cry of my heart. I didn't want him to clean up my mess. I just, I didn't want to feel better. I just wanted him. I needed to know that God who made me, loves me, and forgives me. Lung cancer, liver failure, drunken misadventure, whatever, the bottom line was, I was going to die. They would put me in a nice burial plot in Richmond Hill, and I was going to spend eternity in torment, separated from the God who loves me. One full program over a decade ago, if I went back, it would mean three years of, of recovery in the past 14. I was so unimpressed with myself. A return to teen challenge seemed absurd, unthinkable. And there I stood thinking the unthinkable. I needed 12 months. I needed 12 months with no internet, no TV, no illegal movie downloads, no Facebook where I could get jealous of other people's lives. And a life that was more meaningful than trying to figure out how to get my empties to the beer store without a car. <clears throat> Teen Challenge is a place of mercy. I gave them a call. I, I had those awkward moments in the program. It got a little uncomfortable. Another student would ask me, how many times have you done this program? <laughs> but that is okay. I am worth being there. Again. I am not the first or the last person to feel like a failure, and I am not the first or the last person who felt as if they can't get it right, or wish they got it right the first time. That person is coming to the gates of Teen Challenge, or to a future outreach, like this one this morning. When I meet that person, I can share the story of a God who loves me so much that he will not allow me to be destroyed, buried, and forgotten. I have no idea what the future holds, but I am excited about where Jesus would have me go and what Jesus would have me do. Freedom from debt, training for ministry, a shift from dependent on my parents to a dependence on God. These are all issues I need to address. In the meantime, I have an opportunity as an intern and as a student previously at Teen Challenge to seek God and to learn what it means to trust Him. I will not let this opportunity go to waste. I used to sit in the darkness of a tiny rented room in Newmarket for days and sometimes weeks at a time, just soaking in shame and regret. The only light in the room was the glow of the flat screen or the glow of the computer or the tablet. My new life verses, Micah chapter 7, verses 7 to 8, it says this, Therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. He has been a light to me. I am through with sitting in the dark. A pastor named George MacDonald once said, did the fact ever cross your mind that you are here in this world just to understand the Lord Jesus Christ and for no other reason? I had to answer that question on that street in Newmarket. It's the question I pose to you this morning. Did the fact ever cross your mind that you are here in this world just to understand the Lord Jesus Christ and for no other reason? It's a question that's posed to every man and woman, woman that enters the gates of a Teen Challenge Center across Canada. This morning, you may have received this following, uh, this envelope right here and this brochure. 
If you have it in your hands right now, would you mind just lifting it up and showing me that you've got one? Thank you so much. Are there any sponsors of Teen Challenge here today? All right. Could you just raise your hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you so much. It costs us $1,000 to enter a Teen Challenge program. The place is not Club Med. <laughs> it's not a five-star hotel. There is a swimming pool that we enjoy very much, but it's an older building. I'm just speaking about the farm. And it costs anywhere around $40,000 to put a man and woman through the Teen Challenge program. You gotta think, deodorant, laundry soap, gas, you gotta drive them to probation, you gotta drive here, you gotta drive there. It is not inexpensive. Teen Challenge, Teen Challenge receives no subsidy or funding from any government, federal, provincial, or municipal. The money's there, we don't hate our government. I know for a fact in my own program, I've sat in a classroom, and I've been taught, pray for your leaders. We prayed for Stephen Harper. But the moment Teen Challenge takes any form of funding from a government agency is the moment where we become dependent on that money and then they, become, they begin to dictate what happens next. And what usually happens next is Jesus is slowly filtered out. And the only reason for any success, the Bible itself says anything good comes from God. If there is any reason for any degree of success in a Teen Challenge program, it is because of Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus Christ is removed, we become another program in a sea of programs. I will challenge you this morning. Please consider sponsoring a Teen Challenge student. I am a testimony to the fact that every cent will go to that student, to helping him smell good, to feeding him right, to showers, to bills, to paying for everything that needs to be paid. If you decide to, to sponsor a Teen Challenge student this morning, you have, the option, you have the opportunity this morning of sponsoring Tyler. You can be actively involved. Okay. You can be actively involved in Tyler's program. I can tell you from my own program, right now at home I have a tread, I, I say treasure box, it makes me seem less masculine for some reason. <laughs> I have a box at home. It's got, uh, it's got all the cards, all the envelopes, and my sponsors made sure I had coffee. There was a lot of Tim Hortons cards. <laughs> I was extremely grateful. Sometimes sponsors would come across a book that they thought would impact my program and impact my life. They would send me a book, but there were days where it was not pleasant and I wanted to leave. And I would get it and my counselor would drop by, I got some mail for you. I'd open it up, don't quit. <laughs> if you sponsor a Teen Challenge student, you, can, you have the option of having it uh, for $40 a month, or you can make one payment of $480. It can come out of your account on the 1st or 15th, or it can come out of your credit card on the 1st or the 15th. And in return, you will receive a picture such as this. If you sponsor Tyler, you will receive his card. His testimony is briefly listed on the side. My mom has been sponsoring a Teen Challenge student from the Atlantic Center for the past six years. She has seen four graduates. She can't make it to the Mamram Mem Cook Center. She's 80 years old. How's she going to go? But she's thrilled every time she gets a graduation update. You will get regular updates on your student, how they're doing, month five, month eight. And you can become an active participant because the only job we have as Teen Challenge students, 24-7, for 12 months, is to find God. For that brief window in our lives. I would challenge you this morning to please consider sponsoring a Teen Challenge student. Because God is good. And in the midst of this world of brokenness, and broken hearts, and tragedy, lives are being changed. Thank you so much this morning. Just to put the $40 a month in perspective, 
small Tim Hortons coffee every day for a month is $40. Or a Starbucks once a month. <laughs> Just saying.
Some of you in this room, well, just look at me just for a second. Some of you in this room are here with God, but you want to be here. And every time you start to get closer, at least make that move to get closer, something from your yesterday blocks it. And the devil will come and say, well, you've done this, and you think you're going to get over there. You're not, you're not fit. You're not worthy. You're not blah, 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 blah. And so you get discouraged. And you love Jesus. And you know he loves you. But the accusation is so strong in your spirit that you feel like, I think, there's others of you that you, you'll have victory for a while, but there's a besetting sin in your life. There's this thing that's been there. And, and you might go for a year, you might go for a month, you might go for three years. And be okay. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that thing will come up in your face. You'll yield to it. And there you are, defeated and feeling broken and miserable and messed. I'll be done in a second. <laughs> but it's so true. And we sit in church singing his praises. And you're feeling unfit. No worthy. And yet, from the cross, he spoke from that old tree and he said, It's finished. Now it's time for you to believe it. And act like it is. So I want to pray a prayer. And I want every head bowed and I want every eye closed. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to walk to the front. I'm going to ask you to do something, however. Not prayer. This, this is a good day. For the Holy Spirit to become the breaker of those failure times and those sin times. And this thing gets arrested once and for all. Amen? Amen. So with every head bowed, please, nobody's looking around. This is between you and Jesus and me, just the three of them. If you want to be included in that prayer today, you say, Lord, I've had, I've had enough with, with me, and I've had enough that the devil accused me of, and all the junk. I want to be included in that prayer. Just let me see your hand lift it up and let it down. I see. Lord, yes, all over this place. Let them down. See, you're no different than the churches I go to. When the Lord told me to do this, I was actually... Nervous about it. But it made me to realize that we're just people. And we are weak at times. But when we realize what you just heard up here today, that he is stronger than we are. And he can keep us from falling. And unto him, Jesus, that is able to keep us from falling. So let's pray. Father, <coughs> thank you, Lord, first of all, for Pastor Angel, his precious wife. The leadership of this church, Lord, for inviting us to be here today. Lord, would you bless them with abundance. And the testimony of this church, Lord, throughout this community, oh God, is very rich. But Lord, we sit in here as broken vessels today. I include myself in this. Needing you like we never needed you before. These very perilous days we live in. And so I ask, oh God, for, first of all, Lord, for every precious one, Lord, to lift that hand today and say, Lord, I'm, I'm struggling, and I need your help, Lord, over the things of my yesterday and the things of my now. And so I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that that thing that's been hindering you, it is broken in his name. Broken in his name. You walk in freedom from here on in. And so, God, we lay this stuff before you. And we ask, oh God, that you would give us the courage and the sensibility, Lord, to, to be able to confess our faults one to another, Lord, not for gossip purpose, but, Lord, for healing purpose. That you lead us, to, Lord, to the right people to be able to share it with, that they'll understand and be able to pray consistently together that we might see your will accomplished in our lives. And so, Father, I just pray that from this hour on, mighty things shall take place. And with every head still bowed, there's people here today, you, you say, Norm, I'm, I'm not into the religious thing. And, well, I'm not either, to be honest. I'm into Jesus, but not religion. As such. And you may be feeling like I've hurt these guys. You think God could help me if he helped them like he's helped those guys? And the answer is absolutely resounding yes. The question is, are you willing to run the risk of trusting somebody that you don't know yet? Because he already knows you. But if you'd like to be included in the prayer... 
for your coming into relationship with Jesus. Would you just lift that hand where you're sitting and just say, Lord, pray for me. I, I really don't know him at all, but I know he's good and I know he can help me. At least I'm believing he will. So I'm willing to run the risk and let Jesus into my life. Could I just see that hand? We pray for you right where you're sitting as well. Anybody? I know it's a hard thing to do. All right, let's just conclude. Father, again, we say thank you. Father God, for your goodness. And Lord, should there be someone here, Lord? And, and I know it's tough. I know it's hard. Lord, they're going through stuff and they don't have a comfort zone, Lord, maybe in church life and all that stuff. But Father, would you connect with them by the power of your spirit? That, Lord, they will not be able to be free from you until they just say, God, come into my life. And Lord, that they'll be changed. They'll be renewed. They'll be mighty people for you. In Jesus' name we ask this. And everybody say Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Norm. And thank you, guys, for sharing your life with us. May the Lord bless you. Uh, let me give you a word that David Wilkerson gave to me when I was a teen challenge. God did not take you out of the pit in the Mary Clay for you to sit on a pew. God brought you out of this pit and this Mary Clay to use you to impact those who are lost and those who are searching. You continue in the truth and he will empower you and he will fill you with his mighty spirit. And when the time of weakness comes, the Lord thy God will hold you close to him because now you are a walking miracle of the living God. Take that word with you. Okay. I'm thankful for being challenged. It was there that I met Jesus Christ. And uh, it was a beautiful time. I was buried into the Word of God. And uh, because of that, I've been through the years, close to 40 years in the ministry. I've seen many, many, many miracles of lives changed and transformed by the power of God. I've seen women who were lesbians changed by the power of God. I've seen men who were homosexuals changed by the power of God. I've seen people who are you know, crippled and bound changed by the power of God. But you see, that, that is behavior. Everything is sin. Right? Everything is sin. Okay? And you might be sitting here and you're saying, well, I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. You know? You know? You're still lost if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. You're still lost. You see? Because the day will come when we will be judged. So if you're here and you never accepted Christ, and this is not religion, this is a relationship. If you never accepted Jesus Christ into your life and asked him to come into your heart, maybe now is the time to do it. God brought you here this morning for that purpose, to speak to you. And he wants to change your life. Okay, Linda and I support two challenges. We actually we support Harvest House too in Ottawa, a local place, and we support Teen Challenge. We've been doing that for years. And that's beyond our tithes and offerings. We can never outgive God. No. Never. You know, so there's a ministry that you can support beyond your tithe and your offerings. Let's pray. Eh? Father, you're awesome. You're mighty. You're holy. And Father, there's no other God but you. You are the living God. No other. You have saved us from the bondage of sin. You have set us free. You have given us a song, a song of praise. And many will hear it and they will put their trust in the living God. God, you have provided for us. You have never failed us. You have always come through. You have met every single need in our lives. Lord, your challenge has many needs. Lord, we have heard living testimonies of what you can do. In the lives of those, Lord, who come to the bottom and says, and they cry out, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, Father, you have touched these lives. We pray for them. We pray for Teen Challenge. We pray that you meet every single need in their life. We believe, oh God, that this is the ministry that will impact those who are lost, those who are searching, but will be found. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.